Thunder, 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 Thunder Geeks are live. Hello, Thunderians. You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. That was Creative Mind Frame with Kiss My Dragon Balls. <laughs> and I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I'm Alicia. And I'm Kyle. And, and we're, we're your Thunder Geeks. Geeks. Welcome again to another fantastic episode. Of course, if this is your first time tuning in, hi, we're your Thunder Geeks. Each week we like to get together, talk about the nerdy stuff that's been going on in our community, what we've been up to, and just trying to make it laugh for an hour and a half. So, so uh, Rob, you said that uh, we actually uh, have an announcement here. Do you have it on yet? No. Go get the pizza people. Well, the problem was... Go I, get the pizza people. I was telling you to set up a draw. Oh. And you said, oh, wait, wait, send the song first. Okay, so you have any... Oh, so I have just have the names. Okay, we, so we'll, we'll do that after the first break. We then. will draw names Rob. for pizza shortly. So Rob, Rob kind of pooped the bed here. Hey, hey. That hey. is completely on Rob. So <laughs> so instead, we're going to go to a much more fun topic here that uh, we've been really, really excited for. Uh, I want to first just give a big thank you to a friend of the show, Tanner Bell. Uh, set us up with a real sweet setup for the uh, finale of Dragon Ball Super, finally. Oh, man, I am real. Can we, can we just live there? Yeah, I know, right? Wait, 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 in, like, Dragon Ball Z Land or no. at Tanner's? Uh, oh. kind of both. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Land sounds like a really interesting theme park. And I want to know what kind of what kind of rides would you find at Gigi. Dragon Ball Z Land? Okay, well, obviously <laughs> there would be um, the, oh, crap, what's his name? Shenlong? Shenron. Shenron. There you go. That dude would be a roller coaster. The Shenron coaster? Oh, yes. Yeah, Super Shenron. No, see, there would be three coasters. There would be the Kitty Coaster, which is just the regular one. Then you have the Namekian one, which is like medium to more adult. It's got like noodly arms. And then you got like the, the Super Shenron, which would be that roller coaster that everyone just, just poops their pants in because it's so terrifyingly large. <laughs> noodly arms are amazing. <laughs> uh, I would like to go uh, to Mr. Popo's House of Spookies. <laughs> oh no. no! No, no! You shall sure. never escape, Popo. See, I haven't watched Dragon Ball Z in forever. I'm gonna get all the names wrong. But was it Four and Oolong? They yeah. Don't no, no, matter. no, no, no. But this is Dragon Ball Z Land. They would have like a fun house with like cool mirrors that would distort you, right? And you'd like turn into other stuff. Fair, fair. Yeah. I want some Nimbus cotton candy. The hyperbolic time chamber. They just lock you in a room for a year. <laughs> Did you just come out and they're like, yeah, a year passed. <laughs> what? <laughs> you would just come out with like massive like muscles after. You would just come out and just be like, <laughs> yeah, just lock you in. Just be like, do you even lift, bro? No, what they do is it's called the Piccolo experience. They put like 50 kilo on you and then just say, okay, have fun. <laughs> uh, Mom Blog gave the suggestion the Ulan Quar Petting Zoo. What? Because they're animals. That makes more sense. Oh, wow. What wow. are you thinking? <laughs> so Oolong's the pig? Yes. And he's kind of perverted? He wished for panties. Yeah. Okay. Bulmas, specifically. Yeah. I'm just thinking about he, he, it's... Oolong running a petting zoo, not being in one. Actually, he'd be happy either way. Oh, oh, I just got one. I got one. <laughs> Master Roshi Strip Club. That is not for an amusement that park. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Disneyland has Disney After Dark. What? What? Yes. Okay, I don't... I no, think, I no. think... No, they don't. I think you have been misled, sir. Yeah, I think you have. There's only one place in Disney World that serves alcohol, and it's a super exclusive club. Oh, yeah, I think he's out. There, there is no strip club in Disneyland, Rob. So you think. Mom. No, I'm pretty sure. I, I think I if you went to Disneyland and you got into a strip club. I'm not rich enough. It's just the mascots go in there after night. And they have their theme <laughs> songs playing. Like, you know, Simba comes out and it's just like, ah, <laughs> Rob just wandered into the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> I did can, you, can you not see Rob going up to Mickey and be like, hey, where's the back door of Cinderella's castle? <laughs> I would so Mickey, get you out of this. <laughs> Mom Pod also made a suggestion of uh, Piccolo day Piccolo's daycare. Just uh, it's it's like it's like when, when you drop them off and yeah. you know they get a good dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Were they would they be chased by dinosaurs? That sounds awesome. Yeah, kind of. 
like when Rick drops Jerry off, and then they just do like <laughs> meaningless tasks all day. That's what Piccolo's daycare is. Except he trains. Except they train the kids, you know, to be stronger. Whoever wins the fight over the children gets to change the tent on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so so Dragon Ball Super. So. Where do we want to start with this? Because it has been a long time coming with this tournament of power. For Dragon Ball Z, you don't say. Yeah, well, super, super. Z was last Sorry. time. Now Sorry. it's super. It's an important difference. Sorry. The the Universal Survival Saga, quote unquote, is what it's called, and it's just it's a very interesting one that it takes place a really short amount of time. Very short amount of time, and forty four minutes. This has been. I'm gonna check how many episodes the saga has been, and then try to calculate how many minutes it didn't time out. There was still time left. <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> mhm. Mm oh man. But okay, okay. Well, I'll, <laughs> at the very least, I can get down to a specific minute quota because <laughs> in episode one thirty, they said there's very little time left, and I believe there was two minutes left beforehand. So I can assume that is less than a minute. The last two episodes take place. Okay, so uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Toriyama was just messing with us because an ongoing joke about Dragon Ball has just been how they kind of scale things. Like, there's five minutes until the planet blows up. 16 episodes later. <laughs> yeah, I, I still stand by my theory. And what is that theory? That they're moving so fast that relatively that much time has passed. But to them, but, they're just perceiving it differently. But how would Bulma perceive this? She's just a regular human. Yeah. Bulma wasn't there. But she's been, <laughs> she was witness to all of the things that happened on Namek. No, she really wasn't. Like, they make the joke in Dragon Ball Team Four Star that she never even saw Frieza. So, so her <laughs> watching Goku, Gohan, any of that, she can not see them at all. She was not there for the five minutes of Goku fighting Frieza. But this, she wasn't there. This okay, so my problem with Rob's theory, though, is that they have a lot of conversations within Dragon Ball Super during... They're the just arc. talking fast! So, yeah, so Rob's theory is that they are speaking at supersonic speeds. <laughs> so then how low are their voices, like, at normal speed, then? Very wide levels. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would, you wouldn't even hear, it wouldn't even make, like, it's not like, you it's know, like the... like, brown noise. Like, it's not like the chipmunk noises that they make when they speed it up. It's just like, all you hear is like, ah! I'm sorry, have you heard the Japanese voices? For Dragon Ball, they're not low in the slightest, no. except for Black's English voice. Okay. Because <laughs> it's really, really deep. It's just deep. We'll so go with that. It's, we'll, it's, it's deep. He wants to have his way with you. But they set this up as uh, Goku had asked for a multi-universal tournament, and the god above all gods said, okay, and whoever loses gets erased. He, he made best friends with them first. He did, he did. And the problem is that Zenosama essentially has the mind of a child, and he's, I kind of like the way that they juxtapose it, because uh, Zenosama is essentially the viewer. Mm-hmm. And it's the viewer that's, you know, excited, it's a cool, and you're tracking who's getting knocked out. You want the tournament of people fighting in front of you. Yes. That's all we ever want in Dragon Ball. We just want to see cool powers and cool people and just matchups. And you nailed it. Yes. Uh, I am generally been really happy about this saga just because of all of the different ways that they've been able to pair things up. Because where Terry Amber really excels is in character creation. He's really good at creating, you know, different gimmicks for fighting and just different styles of characters and then watching them interact and, you know, fighting with each other. And, like, you knew right off the bat the Pride Troopers were going to be ones at the end. Because yes. they were in all of the themes and Jiren was the main focus. We waited very long for said character and he blows up with development at the end. Thank you. Thank you for not making him Broly too. <laughs> <laughs> just angry at a young baby. But I did, like the characters like uh, Khalifa and Kefla, Kaba, things like that. All of the Saiyans that you get to watch evolve through the fight and like get excited when they fight Goku, because they have the same like sp uh, same pride. Something that I liked that uh, they had in the rules is that it's okay, it's allowed if it's cool, and yeah. that's exactly what we want. It's like, oh yeah, don't use items and stuff. Cause, yeah, we don't want them using a sensu bean every twenty seconds, but. <laughs> They can use the Patara earrings because it's real cool. There's there's no assistance from the stands 
however, just when it's allowed, as like the characters stand up and give their energy to. It's like whose line is it anyways? The points don't matter. No, nope. as long as it looks <laughs> cool, it continues the fight. Zeno's cool with it. So the thing that was fun to see is just the different evolution between a lot of our main characters here, and we were completely wrong about our lists. Like, I don't think anyone would have guessed that last survivor. No, no, like whoever whoever had. Uh, I guess we we can spoiler spoil it. We're, we're in a spoiler, spoiler yet, so if you haven't seen it yet, what's wrong with you? Yeah. The uh, 17 is the winner. Android 17 is, yet yeah, the last contender standing. The husband Yes! Yes! And there is a very interesting twist at the end, which is give, giving credence to a new theory. Oh? So, as, as you find out, the Grand Prix states, it doesn't matter what your wish was. Yes. If it was anything besides resurrect the other universes, everything's gone. Doesn't matter. He would have blinked everybody out of existence. This is now leads them to believe he's going to be the villain of the next. Zeno? No, not Zeno. Oh, the, the Grand, Grand Priest. Priest. Who is the Grand Priest? The father so, of all the angels. So all of the angels, the universes, uh, characters like Whis, the the blue angel with the staff. Yes. Yes. They have a person above them, and that's their the, dad. Yeah, the Grand Priest. What does he look like? Short like them. He's very short. He looks like a teenager. Okay, yeah, I've seen this one. He floats on a little platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so it was it was him that, you know, revealed at the very end to the characters. If there was any selfish wish. Yeah, we just would have said, see yeah, you just would have been blanked. And it, and thank God for Seventeen. Like, Seventeen gave his... He knew he was going to do this. After all of the fighting he's, like, done with Goku, all the, like... The team up with Frieza. Now, here's my problem with Seventeen's original wish, is that he just wanted to go travel around the world. He can fly! No, he wants to do it with his family. family. He can fly really fast. I think he can carry both of them. I just wanted to point out, they are very good friends with the richest company and the richest person well, on the planet. Well, that's why they show in like the credits scene that Bulma's just like, here you go, cool. So so why did he need to do that in the first He He had no incentive for his wish at the very end. They were just been like, you can use our 6,000 foot yacht. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to borrow it for a while? Sure. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Something that I really like, though, is especially with the, the buildup of the Jiren fight, is that they managed to keep the excitement because Dragon, Dragon Ball Super, it's not something that we particularly watch for plot. plot. No. It's, <laughs> I, I'm not going to pretend that the story is high art or anything like that. We watch because... It looked cool. It's Do you like, remember the jelly people? Oh, what? I forgot the jelly people. Exactly. That was stupid. Let's think of Fast and the Furious, for example. I don't really feel like oh, after the while people go for the plot. They just want to see cars drive fast. And family. <laughs> family. 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 Except for the last one. Oh, no. There's no more family. Cars go fast. Cars drive real fast. Always. Oh, nice. And this, <laughs> is, and this is Shane's go fast. <laughs> yep. Who is faster, the Flash or the Dragon Ball Z character? The Flash. Flash. Um, so... Flash is just faster. Flash is the concept of speed. Yeah. Because they explain that just in Dragon Ball Super, they just hit light speed. The Flash beats the concept of speed of light being a limit with a wrench. I think there was, like, one time where he kind of went, like, 43 octillion times the speed of light. Uh, he evacuated all of the people in an atto second. Yes. An attosecond is so small that it's nearly imperceivable. So it's like, it's even shorter than BLOW! Yeah, yeah. that's actually quite a long time <laughs> in cosmic right, time. Right? Are, are we super excited for the next uh, Goku vs. Superman? Oh, jeez. It's gonna happen. Ultra Instinct, buddy. Goku got oh, a whole new form. Is this the silver hair thing that we've no. always yes. been hype about? The silver haired Goku is. Perfect Ultra Instinct. Yes, and he pretty much he increases in power the longer he keeps fighting. Yes, he no longer thinks about fighting, no longer thinks at all. During the entire fight, he lets his body go. And that's why he struggled for a long time with half of it, because he's a very, he's a very de defensive person. Very defensive person. <laughs> One thing that I did like is that, because uh, everyone was kind of expecting Vegeta to hit that too, and like there's the theories that's like, okay, one half will be attack, one half will be defense. I like that they pretty much branched him off into his own way of powering up and just being a stronger blue, even though the name is 
Super real Saiyan, stupid. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Evolution is Vegeta's final form. That's I see. Fun. The thing is, I don't think that's going to stick know. because every time they've tried to name one of these forms, they always change it immediately yep. after. Dragon Ball Fighter Z, they're still stated as Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta, and Goku. So we should get a new movie called uh, Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan Blue God Super Saiyan Evolution. We are getting a new movie at the end of the year. <laughs> yes. We are not done with Dragon Ball quite yet. Uh, we're getting a new movie and the uh, the talk is that we'll eventually get a new there, series There's going as well. to be another series as well. Yeah, because that's been something that's been a real struggle for them is that they've kept up with this breakneck pace of production where they've been doing an episode a week. Uh, yeah. I, the animation is definitely as smoothed out as the series has gone on, especially compared to the early episodes. Oh, God, those first few episodes. They ended up firing that studio, saying, yeah, we're kind of done with you. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, like, there's a lot of things that you see in, in the Universal Survival Saga that you didn't see prior to. One of the things I point out is when Goku uses his key blast to like blow through Jiren's, and you see the there's fire, there's blue fire that's across all of the battlefield burning. And you get that from Jiren as well when he powers up and explodes. It's fire. And they keep talking about heat. Therefore, we're now establishing that these, these forms are generating immense amounts of heat as well as everything on top of it. Yeah, who thought the uh, big muscly guys would be super hot? <laughs> <laughs> that was a long way to get that. <laughs> um, I mean... I also like the the uh, the juxtaposition you have between you know what Jiren is and what Universe Seven is, where Jiren is the the lone pillar, the the man who stands alone and is stronger above everyone. And Strength then, is absolute. And then you have Goku, who's the one who can put the trust in his friends, and that's how they come through. Mm -hmm. He wins through the power of friendship. He does. Yes, <laughs> he does, and it's not even with who you would expect. It's like Yugi. I have my friends. We have waited very very long. For Goku and Frieza to team up, and it did. They had their own fight sequence and scene where they were fighting together. And it was Vegeta's awesome. face is amazing, as he's very salty. He is very angry in the corner. Oh no! Absolutely. Oh, he's he. Aww. I like the struggle they show within that fight as well, where they, like Goku is pretty much flashing back between being a Super Saiyan in his regular form. As, as the fight progresses, you see him regaining more and more of his stamina and, like, pushing... As, farther and farther. As he sees Seventeen and Frieza doing the same. And you, you get the little back and forth between Frieza and Goku being, like, Frieza's be, making sure you keep your promise. And that was, you know, to resurrect Frieza after this tournament was over. Thanks, Weiss. Yeah, who knew he could just do that? Cool. Like, you know what? You're alive again. Boop. Yeah, he just booped him and the halo was gone and we're all just like... Can, can and we his just, tail came back. Can yes. we just be like, that was a really cool closing scene of Frieza. It's like, I'm back. I Absolutely. When he was like, I'm not stopping being evil. I'm like, That's good. fine. Good. Yeah, because Frieza's the one character you don't want to turn around and pull a Vegeta or a Piccolo or an Android <laughs> or a Oob. Right, sounds like Boo. <laughs> uh... Oh, Tien, Beerus, Yamcha, Beerus. Beerus never actually seemed evil, though. He just was... Well, the thing is, well, his they, point was to destroy you, or, like... Destroy worlds. Earth. Yeah, his, his whole thing was to destroy things. Goku makes friends with all of his enemies. Goku fought the god until he was like, all right, we'll train you. And then they were like, buddies now. I mean, Ish. Krillin's the closest thing he's ever had to a friend through... Actually, Roshi. Roshi's the only one he has liked throughout the entire series, because even with Krillin, he liked Krillin, but Krillin didn't like him back at first. Is, yep. is Dragon Ball Z just, like, a, a, a fighting harem anime? Like, Goku just, like, gets everyone on his side, man. He yeah, he gives really Actually, does. you know what? <laughs> She's not wrong. Yeah, no, that's, 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 really, that's yeah. a, that is Goku disturbingly good fisting, and then they're like, "Hey, I like that. Let's be friends." <laughs> it's a disturbingly accurate description that Goku just fights so well, like he just accumulates friends and hobbies. It did backfire once. Oh yeah, uh, black. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh. he kind of fought the god, and then the god turned around and destroyed the entire universe. Oh no. But on, but on the uh, the plus side, uh, Trunks is gone. <laughs> or is he? Because then uh, I was swear, like... if he came back, <laughs> I'm done. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. We were done with you, Dragon Ball. Okay, so we are at the end of the last saga when they had them traveling to the future timeline of Future Trunks. Uh, it ends with <laughs> Zenosama erasing that timeline and universe, 
And that's how we got to Zenosama, because he pops back into uh, Goku's original universe, and then he's got a friend. Go Goku brings him there. Now, at the end, 17 <coughs> wishes for all of the destroyed universes to be restored, which theoretically might also include... We didn't specifically state... Just the universes in said tournament. Not with that, but remember that it was said that there used to be more universes and Zeno destroyed them too? So there I'm, might be more universes after this. I will. Okay, so the, th the thing about like the turn, they're not the tournament art, uh, Super Saiyan Black's art. I think that was one of the greatest villain reveals I've ever seen. As he shows up in like just red eyes in the cloud, destroying entire universes, kills Bulma in his hands. And then you just see it fade away to him being Goku. And everybody's like, "What? wait, there's some trickery. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. No, I none did. I think it, I'm glad they used Super Shenron in that as well. Yes. You, you saw the Super Dragon Balls be used repeatedly. Thanks, Goku. You know, the Dragon Balls actually mattered. Yeah. That, that's something that's nice because it's been a long time since they mattered. He made him immortal. Yourself mortal. And then they do the fuse thing and comes this weird globby mess. Yeah. You, you can't be a fan of the globby mess. Uh, my fan of, I'm not a fan of the globby mess because it brings out two of my least favorite things. Spirit sword? It brings out the spirit sword from Trunks. <laughs> and it brings out the half an hour blue Vegito. <laughs> Kyle's real salty about the blue Vegito. Real salty about the blue Vegito. <laughs> And that's something I'm surprised we didn't get here, because since they opened up the possibility for the Patari, Thank you. I was expecting Fusion Dance. I wanted none of that. That would have made Gogeta canon, and that would have been a whole bunch of... That would have been... That would yeah. have been some shenanigans. But, like, you, you saw the people use the earrings like Kepla and become god-level strength. Yes. But there's just... You don't need that from Goku and Vegeta. You don't need it to be every time there's like a significant enemy. Goku did this all on his little his little self and had his Vegeta throwing the ball at him at the end. And he's like, I believe in you, bro. And then he's in the stands going, bro. Now, I'm pretty so are we all happy with the, the ending? Because I'm, yep. I'm satisfied. So I know there's been dissent, though. There's been some people unhappy with it. Okay, so there is people that are unhappy because it's it's super cliche. Yes. But what were you expecting? It's... <sighs> you know, no, honestly, I would disagree because I, everyone knew that Universe 7 was going to win. It's yep. just, that's predetermined. We know the good guys are going to win. That's just part of the shonen genre. It's how they get there. However, I don't think anyone expected it was 17 that was going to win and that Goku would drop out. We all thought Goku would be the ultimate savior here. Nope. And 17 just won by surviving. And, and you saw at the end uh, with 18 as well, when she showed up and she's like, are you are you sure? Like, that's what you want? And she was genuinely concerned that he was, we all were concerned he was just dead. He randomly blew himself up. I think Kyle was crying that day. I did. Several times during this arc. Especially Vegeta. Oh, yeah. Okay. Vegeta got me in the feels, too. Vegeta had a moment where he was back against the wall and all that went through his mind was Bulma, his kids, and then Kaba. Uh... Yeah. He sees Kappa like maybe his little brother. Kappa is his little protege, man. He's basically Tarble. Uh, Tarble doesn't exist, though, right? No. No. Any of the movie stuff does not exist in canon. I'm actually trying to remember, did they translate that line when they did the Battle of the Gods TV series? Because in the Battle of the Gods movie, there's a line where they're like, we need another Saiyan. What about your little brother, Vegeta? I'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to remember, do they say that in the show? I yeah. never watched it. Yeah, if I'm being honest, uh, I Skip skipped that. I skipped everything but Captain Ginyu. I heard Ginyu showed up, <laughs> I watched those couple episodes, and then I just kept waiting until new things showed up. Because I'm like, ah, I've seen this movie already, I don't need to see it again. So we need to go back and rewatch those episodes, just to be sure. There, it was just, and the other universes that you saw, like um, the, the Love Universe, I can't remember what it was called. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember the numbers here, but this was pretty much your magical girl universe where yeah. the ultimate power is love and you watch them go through the magical little transformations. I want more magical girls. <laughs> they they yes. legitimately had full-blown magical girl transformations and were like, okay, Goku's appealing, or like Dragon Ball is appealing to multiple fandoms now. Because you have like... Furries. Yeah, I was going to be like the, the universe of like uh, <laughs> animal people. And the one that looked like Frieza, but wasn't Frieza, the giant thing that was combined. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, the, actually, that the one was one that took all of them to destroy. That was more uh, Giro that I took it from. Like it was kind of like your ultimate android. Yeah, that's true. Like they they took inspiration from a lot of different things and from their past as well. Broly. Well, yeah, Broly was Kefla. Ka- and Kefla Ka- and Khalifa. Uh, Khalifa were, were basically just to bring Broly in. I keep just the and, Khalifa. And to be the first super female Super Saiyan. Yes. I also wish they kind of made like a villain that looks like Janemba. Come on, how cool would that be for you? It's like, hey, Janemba! I would have loved Janemba to be canon. My hope is that, I mean, we'll see what they do with the next movie. I do want them to do another, like, sort of universal tournament again, but. They can change it up this time because they're getting like 10 minutes to select their teams this time and they're all in a panic. Next time they can be training and we can see a lot more crazy things happen. Like I promise you if it happens again, we're not going to see the same pride troopers come through. We're not going to see, see the same magical girls. I don't know if they're going to, but I have a feeling that at some point Roshi's going to go. I, I think that they eventually they have to. Like I thought they were going to do it in this and... That probably would have been like a moment I broke down and just I would, when when Goku was walking back with Roshi towards the middle after he'd like gone all out and showed became the MVP for like half the tournament destroying everybody. Goku and him at the end just like holding each other's shoulders and be like, "It's time to rest now, old man." I'm like, oh. <gasps> <gasps> like don't Roshi, please. So I think we all look forward to the next movie here, and I, I mean. Really do. We're never going to stop loving Dragon Ball. They could do anything, and I will Except keep watching. I, yeah, I didn't watch through GT. <laughs> I, did. I tried, and then I gave up. But on that note, folks, we're going to head to our first break here. Thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or on the world at radio.ca, where your Thunder Geeks will be right back. And we're back. You're listening to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM, C-I-L-U, or around the world at L-U-Radio.ca. That was Sazy with my final form. Okay, okay, let's keep rolling along here. So more Dragon Ball Super? More pizza. <laughs> no, no, no. So, okay, okay, Rob has the setup now. So, of course, uh, once again, thank you to all of our donators uh, during Fun Drive here. And as promised, uh, we are giving away uh, two pizzas from Eat Local here. So who wants to do the honors here? Alicia. Oh, they should go pick from that. Am I just grabbing one name? Or just one name. One, one person name. gets two pizzas? Yes. yes. Oh, lucky person. And that lucky person is? I can't read that. It's Sabrina. Sabrina! Sabrina! Woo! <laughs> so, so congratulations. <laughs> we will uh, give out the pizzas here. Now, now, Alicia. <laughs> Alicia, I, I'm real happy for you here. So you Oh, because I'm dying right now, right? Uh, that too. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to inherit your kitties and uh, maybe the TV. Am I am I in the will? What's the will set up like here? Like if, say, Do you know how much wills cost? Uh, okay, well, what if we set up a ton team? A what? The last person dies, it gets everything. All you got to do is write on like, a napkin. Yeah, I don't like, think that's legally admissible. In I court. want you to go. Andrew gets my stuff and just scribble like your Who's name your next on it. Kin? My husband. Well then, yeah, legally anything you tell him, he can still proceed as your will. Yeah, murder suicide. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the important part here is I get all of the stuff. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, how it happens, ethics and minor details. Yeah, your games. Uh, we can split. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> fill in my collection, you can have what's left over. Well, see, here's the thing, at least, if you guys want to, like, split Kingdom Hearts, I have two copies oh, you can have of that. everything. Oh, okay, we got, yeah. we got two copies, it's good. It just depends what system Gives you want. potato. Oh. You know what, you can have Slipper. No, it's just like, but Bernie bur- bur- oh, cat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not, she's literally a couch potato. Well, Alicia, what have you been up to this week? I played a game with my husband, because... Ooh, Final Fantasy? No, you. Have, when is Final Fantasy a two-player game? Oh, uh, when you play it. Yeah, have 11, you said 14? Listen, you. <laughs> I, I have seen you play Final Fantasy. You <laughs> always play the two-player games. Like, I need to level up more. Here you go, hubby. Okay, so... Go grind for me for a bit. What kind of two-player games do we have here that we can pick for, like... Hmm. Wait, what? She's trying to figure out what... I'm trying to guess. Two- well, oh, they're married, so they play the best two-player game. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Oh, but Alicia, what have you been playing? I played Cuphead. 
<gasps> and I've wanted to play it since it came out, and then I just kind of went, oh, I need money, but I paid for it finally. Yay! Sweet, so we're gonna go visit Leisha and play Cuphead. <laughs> How many times do you rage quit? <laughs> Uh, I normally don't rage quit. It's tired quit. It's normally I've been looking at the screen so long that I just I can't anymore. I can't even. Fair. <laughs> you literally. I, I I need to know which part did you prefer, boss fights or the like, actual platforming? Okay, so for those who don't know what the game is, pretty much it's like it's like old schooly animation. Very. It's actually everything says copyright nineteen thirty on yeah, it. Yeah, everything's done in the uh, the classic like nineteen thirty noir. <coughs> Very Fleischman. So pretty much there's Cuphead and Mugman, and they decide against the elders' wishes to go to a, the Devil's Casino and gamble. And they were doing so good, and the Devil gives them like a choice of like, oh, roll this and double your winnings or lose everything or something. And of course they lose. It's the Devil's Casino. So he's like, oh, well, you know, we'll, uh, I'll uh, erase your debt if you go find all my other debtors to, like, you know, bring back and stuff like that. And look. So the thing about this game is most games, you know, there's a whole bunch of levels. Then you get a couple boss fights, right? Yes. This is exactly the opposite. It is a whole bunch of boss fights. And there's a couple levels you can go through if you want. It's, it's just, it's just oh. all boss fights. Boss fights the game. P pretty much. Uh, this game is so hard. <laughs> you don't even know, guys. See, that's one thing I've been hearing about this, but for me, like, that's kind of what excites me because this falls into my wheelhouse where I really like <laughs> platformers. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. The levels are completely optional in the sense that you don't actually have to complete the levels to get on to the next island. Lame. Well, the levels are there. If you collect all the coins in a level, then you can go and buy stuff to power yourself up. The main goal of this is to beat all the bosses to get to the next level. Oh, so Mega Man. I've never played Mega Man, so sure. Yep. The first level, because we just, you know, you walk out of your little place and you're like, oh, hey, that's apparently where I should go first. We played this thing for an hour and a half. Is it the vegetable? <laughs> no. Something with dandelions and a forest. <laughs> Hour and a half, and we couldn't beat it. Why? Get good. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. When you're used to platformers, you eventually get used to the patterns where the enemies fall and stuff goes. There are no flipping patterns. Mm. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah Andrew. Andrew oh. is gonna have to get wrecked and then realize and that he needs it. to get good. There's, there's one specific boss fight. I. I tried to play play it with somebody, and it's it's the frog with the boxing gloves. <gasps> no. And it's there's two bosses on each side of the screen, both doing abilities. <laughs> so you have to wind up dodging both of them at the same time. You see how good I am at dodging. Uh, <laughs> I see how good you are at dodging retro games. That's fair. Yeah. So here's the thing: where I'm not this gonna say, is, I'm this gonna, is retro animation. I'm not gonna say that there's no patterns. There are some patterns, but they are so completely unpredictable. You don't know what they are until you're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> the one thing that makes this game hard is you're given a set amount of HP. There is no way to gain your HP back. There's, I don't mean, get hit. There's, there's like a one level up that you can pick, but then it weakens your shot and it's totally not worth it. However, if you are playing two player, you can bring each other back to life with one hit point, but pretty much you lose your hit points. Um, they're, they're gone. <laughs> and you, you would think that, you know, the levels of bosses don't change if it's one player or two player. So you would think if there's two people, it would make it easier. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, like, worst things that happen is when you, like, die in a level, it shows you how close you are to the end with the little flag. Ooh. So immediately you're like, I was so close, I have to do this again. Three hours later yes. of beating your head against the wall, you're like, I'm not going to get there. And the worst is when that, that comes up, and you can see like the, the nose of your character touching that flag pull at the end, and you're like, two more shots. Two more shots, and I would have won. So one thing I'm going to say is a kind of a downside to this game is there's so many things happening on the screen at once, it actually gets very difficult to pay attention to. Because oh, but I'm kind of that like to hope. Well, it gets to the point where, and I, I get why they did this. Sometimes the two characters, Cuphead and Mugman, are 
so similar in appearance, constantly you're going to end up looking at the wrong character. Oh, see, that's my problem, is if if I'm playing the same character as someone else, or a similar looking color because they changed the skin on the character... Bomberman. I always confuse who I am, and where am I on the screen is something I commonly say if I'm not like a bright green or blue or just a very distinctive color from everyone else. Exactly, Probably. and the, like the two characters, they do have their like their distinctive differences. Like I believe um, Cuphat, Cuphat has a longer straw, Mugman has a bigger nose, one is red and one is blue, but the main point is, is they're both mainly black and white. So especially when you're spinning, you're doing your super moves and stuff, if you're not very much paying attention, you will end up looking at the wrong character. Uh, the other thing, and I don't want to say this is necessarily a downside to me, but it could be a downside to gameplay in general, is that color and sound are extremely important in this game. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, like colorblind issues, or if you don't really can hear things good, or you have like a hearing problem, it's going to make this game a lot harder. What? Like, I, I play a large majority of the games without sound, because mm -hmm. I'm usually watching something like on, on the TV or like doing something as well. Which is why, like, subtitles in games, super important. Please. Oh, yes. But, like, I, I understand what you mean. You do need, like, there are sound signals to certain, like, abilities and things that are happening. Yeah, you and, like, in one attention. level, there's this one enemy that will eventually come down on the screen and kind of zigzag down. <laughs> and, again, there's, there's no pattern to where he's coming from, and you don't know he's coming until you start hearing this buzzing noise. So if you're not playing with sound, you have no idea until you're dead. Ooh. I still really want to play this game. Oh, absolutely. I think everyone should play it. It's well worth the money. It's only like 22 bucks or something. And here's the, here's the thing that kills me. All these boss fights that I'm doing and sometimes spending two hours on, I'm playing them on simple right now. <laughs> and there is a regular mode. And it's... Uh, I mean, I'm going to do it because there's a percentage thing. And I mean, like, that's, that's my thing. It's going to say 100. It might say 100 in two years, but it's going to say 100. <laughs> How do you think we'd be able to tackle this? Okay, so honestly, there is... I, I, I see games a lot of the time, and they're all hyped up as being the most difficult things, cough, cough, dollar spills. Yeah. And, I, you know, i got to take it upon myself to try them at least. And there's certain games that with time, you can you can get really into it. Like Dark Souls is basically just a big time spender. Yep. There's a certain point in this where it's it's skill versus time. And I think if we, like, could sit down, we would not I don't believe we could beat it. I don't think we could really? finish it. I do not. I, it's an incredibly hard game. And I, <laughs> I've tried very, very hard games. Yeah, like, I've beat Meat Boy, and I've beat things like that. Yes. <gasps> You've beaten Meat Boy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I have, finished, I have finished the kid's <laughs> level. The one with spikes down the entire wall. I've beaten my face against that until it's done. I genuinely fear Cuphead's difficulty. See, because Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew's been walking me into this with, like, his, like, chest all out. He's like, oh, yeah, Cuphead, no big deal. This is, oh, I've done this before. But you, I'm sorry, but you just don't understand. If, if, you if, just don't comprehend do you, it. How much RNG is it, and how many patterns are there? Oh, well, okay, here's the thing. The entire thing is run and gun. The one thing that really... Oh, Gunstar Heroes. No, here's the thing, and this is I'm used to levelers like Mario. You can't jump on the enemies to kill them. No, you, you shoot have them. to shoot them. Yes. There is you can. You Do you have different types of shots? You can equip different types of shots. But a lot shot. of the time, spread shot, spread shot all day, every day. I haven't come across a spread shot yet. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. You have to beat the levels to get the coins to go buy the level ups, and levels are flipping hard. <laughs> So you know in, in movies where like that girl the little veterans like don't do it Billy <laughs> I'm warning you don't go in there and it's just like no I can do it shut up my Dad. destiny don't do it Billy <laughs> but I believe wait I just figured out a way for Andrew to fund the studio for life mm. pay a dollar every time you die you have to play the game oh oh here's the thing there is a section <laughs> that tells that you. tells you how many times you have died oh that's gonna be brutal because the thing is i don't really care about dying i will die over and over and over again to see the different ways that i can die and then i know how not to die if you watch like my first 10 minutes of playing breath of the wild i die like every four minutes because i try to do four. everything four. <laughs> here's the thing when i was about 12 hours into the game and then i think we're about like 20 22 hours now 
12 hours into the game, we had died 1,500 times. <laughs> and I'm not even exaggerating. Just one of like the, the death animation things. I love when companies put that in, like a death counter, just to, just to show you just how much you've wasted here. I love Meat Boy's rendition of it, where after you die, when you beat the level, all of the versions of you that ran during that time period run at the same time. So you watch all of the deaths simultaneously. <laughs> so you just watch everybody die. Speaking about death, hey Megan, what have you been up to this week? Who's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> your serial killer of the week, Megan? Oh, is Constantine a serial killer? No. No, no. I mean, it's not. He's a ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not wrong. Uh, okay, so I have I have watched the Constantine uh, animated series that has just been released uh, called. Uh, it was Constantine uh, City of Sins. It City was on City of Demons. City of Demons. Demons. <laughs> needs more. Constantine City of Demons. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this was put out on CWC, so this is similar to what they did with, like, Vixen, where they kind of do these, like, six-minute uh, episodes that all kind of wound up into, like, a half-hour animation. I really like this, um, because it's, it's super easy to watch. It's got this Constantine. You know, because it's Constantine. Matt Ryan has reprised his role as Constantine. He is playing the animated version, and I like the voice acting because, uh, well, Matt Ryan has had practice in the past. Um, so you just like listen to Matt Ryan's Rankin. voice. You just like listen to an audio tape of him reading the dictionary, and you'd be like, "Oh yeah, Matt Ryan, talk dirty to me." <laughs> and, and you describe what a eucalyptus is. Cigarette. <laughs> Damon. <laughs> you gotta go to Damon. <laughs> that sounded more like Atlas. <laughs> this is why I have trust issues. <laughs> Damn you, Atlas. But uh, it, it follows the story of John. Um, helping his friend out, Chaz. Yeah, his daughter got taken by a demon, it seems. Chaz's daughter got taken. Constantine does not have a child. That he knows of. That he knows of. <laughs> Megan, Megan's gonna fix that real soon. That is <laughs> <laughs> Megan's the final demon. <laughs> yes. So, Chaz's daughter is in a deep, deep coma. And unfortunately, uh, John has to help get her out of the coma. He finds out that he needs to, because she's so deep in this coma caused by uh, the supernatural, he has to call in the nurse of nightmares. The nightmare nurse. Now, this is a DC character that's completely off my radar. I, She might be more involved with the Vertigo side of it, but man, I like... I like when, because this, this is canon to the CW universe as well, I like when they start pulling things in that I don't recognize and just digging deeper into DC's history. I've had a few nightmare nurses. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, oh, I no. wore the miniskirt once, Kyle. <laughs> and I needed him to burn the memories out. And I love this. I love this character because she is, she's smart, she's powerful, but she's like wearing like a mini skirt and like high, like, knee high thigh high boots even and she's just rocking it um she ends up uh conjuring a demon uh through chaz's daughter to help figure out what they need to do to free her from this coma meanwhile there are so many other people like young children going through a comas as well now, something that I like, they, they had the exchange between uh, Chaz's wife and the Nightmare Nurse, where they dive into one of the most important storylines within Constantine's history, and that's Newcastle. What, what, what actually happened at Newcastle. It's something they referenced very frequently back when they were uh, having their own you know, uh, show on NBC. They still referenced it in Legends. Yeah, they've referenced it in every time he's shown up in Legends, they talk about Newcastle. Every time Constantine shows up, they talk about Newcastle, but we haven't got to see this version of it yet. This time, ooh, this is the benefit of doing with animation. because All of the it, blood! Man, is it gory. This uh, little this little animated series, uh, n not, not for the kiddies. Do not show it to your... Feline friends or your children. That demon massacres. 
people. Everything. Imagine a snake demon with like a human, like a like a naga, but with wings and evil are looking. You you want it in the bedroom, don't you, Megan? No, that thing is terrifying. That no, uh, I want it like that thing is. I want that thing like as my bodyguard. Did we get a name for it? No. Uh, Yogg Zaboth. Oh yes, actually we did get a name for it, but the subtitles weren't on, so I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> so Jerry comes in. And just slaughters everyone. Just, and they're like, why, you Jerry? Literally beheads and starts eating people. Oh, Jerry. Classic Jerry. <laughs> Are you okay, Andrew? Oh, the name's on the tip of my tongue. But I did like the look of the demon. And it was fun to watch a whole punk club get slaughtered. <laughs> but, yeah, we also got to see, you know, Constantine's greatest mistake, and that's Astrid being captured and dragged into hell. Yeah. And, man, does he do it nonchalantly? He just picks her up. He's like, yeah, you're frozen. Boop. Looks. Boop. Throws her in the portal. And, like, this was this was John's first time conjuring, like, a really high-powered demon. Mm-hmm. And he thought he could control it. But what did he do? He didn't cast a binding spell over the demon. So the demon is not bound to him, and he cannot control its actions. So again, it just starts slaughtering everything. Takes the girl, throws her in the throws her in the portal, and that is the last time that John ever sees this girl. He tried to save her, but he's just an idiot, John. You're an idiot. Now they kind of leave this on a cliffhanger, and it doesn't really lead into anything with legends or anything else. So I'm hoping this is going to connect back to something, or they'll continue with this animated role with Constantine. Better yet, do like a longer form of of this. They Maybe might, this is a backdoor pilot. They might just be like dipping their toes in to like test the waters to see how well this does, and then see if they can get the money from there to continue it. Backdoor pilot. That, that would be the benefit, because what's happening is, is the reason Chess's daughter was stolen is you have five demons who are all kind of vow, vying to set up the franchise of hell on Earth. <laughs> Where it's like, ah, yeah, come here, get your soul damned. I want cheeseburgers. <laughs> I want demonic cheeseburgers. I uh, think they sell those in China. What? The, the, what? Black, the Black Big Mac. They oh. sell that in China, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I want oh, one of those. Oh, man, that's the brood way. The brood witch, the, the, the Kyle Ren chicken sandwich. <laughs> Kyle Ren. It's what? a very, it's a very beefy chicken sandwich. <laughs> but it's black because he broods. Isn't there that kind of chicken that actually has black meat? I don't think anything naturally has black meat. <laughs> no, I think there's actually this chicken that does. There, there is a type of fowl that has dark meat all within its all of its meat, but I can't remember which which animal that is. So, so what one thing we'll see is if this is going to tie into later in Legends is we've had it confirmed that uh, if Legends is picked up for a fourth season, Constantine is promoted to a regular cast member. Well, we, we've thought this is happening a couple times, but he has made a couple appearances as a guest this time. It seems that he will be joining the Legends team, so we got we got to force Megan to watch all of Legends now. No! <laughs> no! But I thought you wanted to call Steve back. He's back! I do! Okay. He's back just for you, and now you have to watch every uh, every episode of every CW series so you know who all these characters are. Good luck. I can't, I can't stand it. Every time I look at these characters' faces, I get so angry. I'm just so angry. What, what did angry. he ever do to you? He was he was taught the vegan. No, I mean like the Flash. Yeah, what's wrong with Barry? And 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 the Green Arrow. I just no, what's not that with Stephen Amell. Stephen no. Amell is gorgeous. Just, just, He's just a very nice man. Yeah, you can't. That's, to touch him. Actually, guys, that's the problem. Oh, they're that's very sorry. nice men. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're going to head to our next break here, folks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Thunder Geeks, brought to you by 102.7 FM CILU, <coughs> around the world at LURadio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. Hi. We're coming in. And we're back. Welcome. <laughs> You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU, around the world at LURadio.ca. That was under pressure from the magicians, and of course, we're your Thunder Geeks. 
So, Rob, Rob, you asked me to play that song, I assume, for a very specific reason. What have you been up to this week? The Magicians! Oh, surprise! Holy crap, I've seen some of this! <laughs> <laughs> She's so excited! Oh, I'm not really worried about potential spoilers for Alicia. Alicia, if I tell you to go la la la... Oh, no, when I say when I see some of it, I've seen, like, you know... An episode, and then four episodes. I, I, I get this reference. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say, Alicia, genuinely watch this show, because this is right up your alley. Rob, you've been trying to get me to watch this for a long, long time now. I, I have. Uh, I'll preface by saying I'm not a fan of fantasy genre as a whole. It's a really hard thing for me to get into. So when something, you know, is fantasy <laughs> and gets me interested, oh, yeah, you best believe it's doing something. You're welcome. <laughs> didn't, we, didn't we decide to watch this together? No, I learned it from my friend Nikita. Oh, Oh yeah, so the magicians is about a group of magic users or magicians who go, to, <laughs> who go who go to a magic university called Great Bills. Except for magic in this world's very different. It's not like wave a wand, you get a thing. There's very like hard rules. You can't like alter reality, change time, or anything like that. Oh, but a bunch of people do it. Last oh, week. Oh yeah, the rules are broken all the time. But the thing is, the, these magicians do things we would do if we had magic powers. Uh, such as the case of there's two senior students who use their magic to create magical drugs and alcohol. Awesome! Yeah, and they're like, well, you can make fractal dust. Is there a way that we can use magic powers to just get free food? Yes. Yeah. Yes! Absolutely. That's all that matters! You can have infinite nuggers. Yes! Actually, there's a hilarious uh, side story in the first season called Cancer Puppy. Why? It's called Cancer next. Puppy because uh, they figured out a way to keep this dog immortal, but it's still technically aging inside of its puppy body. So it's like a few hundred years old, but it's got like seven different kinds of cancer, but they're still keeping it alive. Oh, wow. That's horrific. Magic. Yeah. Magic. That's not good. Does it hurt? No, puppy's fine, except for when they blow it up. What is it with this show? They tried to cure cancer puppy of cancer, and then they went, Poof! Well, at least it wasn't a cat. A man casually walked up and pulled somebody's eyes out. And made In the first episode. on the desk. Oh, yeah, this is, like, <laughs> extremely graphic. It's on, it's, like, broadcast on Showcase. Yeah. Yes. So. Ah, skin max. <laughs> Any thumbs? Oh, oh no, there's actually, there there actually is sex magic, too. Oh. Any thumbs? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, part of the sex magic spell they use is they need to summon their friend who is a traveler, meaning he can just teleport anywhere. And in order to summon him, because he's kind of just traveling around lost, uh, he they discover that in order to use the sex magic, they have to arrive at the same time. So, yeah, they have to use these, these spells and the guy who's teaching them is like, you two can do that at the same time? The guy's like, yeah, no problem, I can get her there. And she's like, uh, actually... Oh, uh, Faking it. Yep. <laughs> that was a gulp. <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's... Whole... <laughs> but, yeah, so, season one, we deal with the beast. Uh, a being so powerful in magic that they've tried 40 separate times to kill him, trapped in a time loop until they kill him. It's a bunch of mobs. Oh. Well, no, they just cover his face. It's like <laughs> there's a bunch of mods for a while. Hmm. And so we don't find out who he actually is. He was a boy who got touched when he was very young. Oh. Kind of made him go crazy. As is one to happen. As a lot of secret stuff. So, yeah. Uh, after the beast, we get the gods. Yep. Ooh, which gods? Uh, there's Renault. a satyr god. That would be the Wait, no, Ronald was the fox one, isn't he? Yeah, Ronald was the trickster who forcefully had his way with one of the main characters. Oh, but you know, like what God Pantheon they're pulling from, or is it all of them, or just just a little bit making of making it up? Yeah, they're, they're, they're making it up. There's a few references to other gods that have existed. Just to put it into kind of perspective, these this child from Ronald, they go to uh, some Asian ladies to get their magic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ancient Chinese magic. Yep. But yeah, so that results in one of our characters being quote unquote got touched. From Foxy? Yep. yep. Ooh. And in season three, uh, at the end of season two, again, here's the spoilers uh, they kill a god, and the gods are like, uh, humans, you lose magic. And only the one who's got touched has magic left. 
So they're on a quest for the seven keys to reclaim magic. They had like reserved batteries and things like that that had residual magic left and, in them. Oh, like like a Green Lantern battery? Kind, kind of, sort of, yeah. But then we also learn a terrifying truth of how some of these people have reserved magic. They uh, cut up fairies, which are, are not like these little things. They're like the most powerful deity-like creatures. They're creepy albino people that can't be seen unless you make a deal with them. Yep. So like the fluffy ones, the actual fae. Nope, they are very, they're human-sized people. Who are albino and yeah. But what they do is they cut them up and grind them into powder and snort it for magic cocaine. See, I'd be okay with it if it was a tiny fairy. No. You know, we're talking about like bright sized no. fairy. I was okay no. with yo know, bam. I arguably think they're taller than people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they look bigger. I believe I read a book where one fae was eating a lot of other fays to become like the super fae. The super fae. Well, here they're snorting them. That's so so oh. messed up. Oh yeah. And they gotta keep them alive to do it, so they're like cutting off bit after bit after bit. Oh, it's a very, it's a very dark, dark. series. But uh, not really selling me on this. Wait, how about messenger bunnies? Messenger bunnies are awesome. They're fa- they're rabbits that they talk into, and then they teleport them to the other place, and the rabbit uses said human voice to talk and to play the message. That oh. sounds disturbing. Oh no, it's hilarious because it's... they also sound like they're smokers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you get the message and be like, Marigold in the ship. <laughs> Here, here's your lovely... Yeah, that, that's the queen of the fairies. <laughs> but yeah, so I actually want to first talk about the song, because the song is actually an, a pivotal plot moment. Yeah, what you told me, so is this a musical or is it not? It's not a musical show, but um, so to get the seven keys, one of the quests is they have to be unified. And so uh, one of our main characters, Quentin... It's like, okay, this is going to sound really weird, and half of you are in literal life and death situations right now, but you gotta sing. And Can anyone not sing? Nope, they all have to sing in order to survive. I mean, like, are they off key? I don't think Penny was that great. Yeah, <laughs> I think Penny would have been, like, the least one. There are some that are, like, legitimate singers that yeah. sound real good. I can't remember her name. Yeah, uh, Queen Margo? Or no, the other. Julia? The one no, who's got touched? The one that liked Penny. Or uh, was in a relationship with Penny. Alternate world, you mean. Yeah, this this is a weird story with a lot of alternate realities and timelines. They're not selling me on this now. <laughs> I was in, I'm like, oh, snorting fairies, musicals. And Katie. It's like, Katie. Oh. Yeah, one from the right universe. But, uh, the, so yeah, they have, to, <coughs> they have to pick a song that they all know. So they go with Bowie. That's uh, Quentin cast a spell that they can all learn the words for it. Yeah, but it was just really cool. So, yeah, they all know the words via spell. Also, the way they cast spells in the show is really weird and intense. Like, they do specific hand motions, but, like, some of these things they do, it's like... Think of Trunks' as burning attack, but, like, slow down. <laughs> so, like, all of those people that wear those cool, like, light-up gloves at raves could, like, cast really dope magic. Yeah. yeah. Actually, there's a hilarious uh, thing in the show that they mentioned in Season 1 where uh, you don't even have to be, like, full trained magician. If you just know the right words and hand motions... You can accidentally create a spell. And they're <laughs> like, yeah, we've had to take down this video of Bush accidentally doing a spell like 50 times. <laughs> and I'm just imagining like this old angry married couple, and then one day just like, Havada Kadabra! Poof! Oh, 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 oh no! Kyle, that actually explains a lot. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, so in. Uh, so far, they've got six of the seven keys to restore magic, but they've learned that the seventh key will destroy the fairy kingdom. Oh. Actually, that's a good thing, because the fairies are total jerks. Yeah. They, no more starting fairies? They kind the, of steal children. Oh. What? Oh, yeah. so like, oh, wow, like old school, like Brothers Grimm fairies. So one of the things, uh, <laughs> uh, one of our high kings or queens makes a deal with the fairies and says, hey, you save my kingdom, I'll do whatever you want. Okay, I want you to pick these mushrooms in this garden. Pick them all off this wall and do it with this, like, tiny toothpick. And she's just really messing with them. It's like, oh, I don't like your attitude, so I'm just going to take your eye out of your socket. Yeah, yeah. she's very, like, the, the fairies are very... They uh, think they're... people. They, they believe themselves to be the top of the world because, well, with the power of their magic, they kind of are. are. You can't see them. And But they can still kill you and affect you. They're literally invisible, but not... Without form. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta make a do, just make a deal with them. So, so last thing before we wrap up the show here is uh, something near and dear to our hearts: giant robots and giant monsters. 
So Pacific Rim finally came out, and okay, Rob, I'm, I want you to start first on this, just because I'm curious how you feel on this. I enjoyed it. it if you're not, if you like the first one, I can't imagine you wouldn't like the second one because it's giant robots fighting giant monsters. It, it's not like high art where you have to think deep into the story. It's oh, cool, one we get him punch that thing. <laughs> <laughs> See with with me, I was I was enjoying the movie, and I was I was really excited at the aspect of other people with Jaegers fighting them, and then they threw that out the window, and then they went back to the kaiju thing, and I was like, oh, come on, dude, it was it was it was gonna be cool. The mech kaiju's were cool. Every time I think of the Pacific Rim, I always think about Titanfall, the video game. Are they similar? In, in a sense? No, oh, Jaegers are way bigger. Jaegers are way. two people with a neural link, and they go inside each other's like memories and thoughts and things of that nature. Yeah, well, pilots have to be drift compatible, because the way to run the uh, the Jaegers is they kind of have to merge minds, and they act as one. That's kind of... Unless crazy. you have a tiny Jaeger. Unless you have a tiny Jaeger, because it's, it's, it's small enough that it can be you know, run with just a single neural network, and there's one that has to be run with three. I like the ideas that they were setting up here more than I like the execution. Now, when it comes down to, like, robots versus aliens, or robots versus monsters, and robots versus robots, I was down each time. And I even appreciated with uh, certain scenes where they made clear before they, like, flattened an entire city that everyone's been evacuated first, so I don't have a Man of Steel effect where I'm like, oh, man, they're murdering so many people by throwing what? buildings at the monsters. Well, some of them didn't quite make it to the underground tube things. But the uh, thing is, that's going to happen. We're talking about instinction-level events here. Oh, yeah, no, I can accept like... some collateral damage. I'm at least comfortable enough that, like, the buildings they keep throwing on top of these guys, I'm like, okay, they're empty. They're not just running through, making <laughs> <laughs> successive public damage for no reason. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Except for the, like, uh, random first Jaeger that came out of nowhere. He just kind of destroyed everything. But come on. Come on, Kyle. That Did was... you not like the Cyber Jaeger? Or I... the cy Cyber Kaijus? They were right cool. Like, they looked generally like the drones and things of that nature. I really enjoyed their end tactic mm -hmm. of, of, like, just shooting him from space. Because that's very mech anime. Yes. That's very in that station. I have one big problem. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I pointed it out to Andrew, too. And I went, oh, wow, that does happen. Almost every single large enemy in that movie, when they get defeated, stand back up and then die immediately. What? Not once, not twice. The end kaiju does, several of the robots do, and, like, you'll see them get defeated, right? They'll be on the ground. They'll get up and immediately just fall over. For, like, dramatic effect? Yes. yes. That's it? Except... It's not dramatic when you do it almost every, time. every fight. Oh. Like the end, the end one. I thought it would have been like obliterated into nothing. Yeah. You shot a Jaeger from space. Don't don't have the last hurrah. I, I'm okay. You're showing him like blown in half. My question is though, he was attempting to get in the mountain, right? Yes. Now when he hits him with the Jaeger, <laughs> he's on the mountain and he shoots him into the mountain. Now if you look at the angles, he was on... Um... The edge of the mountain and the way he hit so, knocked so him off he, to the side. He literally skinned the entire mountain with no damage to it on this kaiju who's leaving giant footprints as he walks. I'm not saying it made sense. It did look cool. It gave it like an interesting thing to, as to why they're destroying that, cities. That's supposed to be a thing. It's not supposed to be thought developing. It's supposed to be uh, <coughs> excuse me, that looks cool. And they they accomplished Matt. My issue is is that I kind of felt just empty at the end where I'm like, okay, they did a lot, but there there was no real big like hit you moment that we had. Charlie in the first Day. One. Yeah, we're like, we are canceling the apocalypse. They tried that. There no, was I, I meant Charlie Day's oh. whole reveal of who, what he is. Mm, nah. I love that twist. You, I mean, you saw it too early. You did really like when the apartment. Yeah, when like you saw it, was, it, you're just like, oh. Now everything's compromised. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, now everything's compromised. And we're like, yeah, we knew that. I still liked it. And the fact that it gave, like, a face and a voice to the evil. The thing is, is that I think to make me satisfied with it feeling like this movie mattered, 
is that we had to get a little bit more info about the motivation about the anti-universe. If they would have given us a little bit more the on that, the, yeah, the precursors, why they want to destroy the Earth, I think it would have made more sense to they me. They're the, terraforming it. Yeah, they explained completely in the first one. They're terraforming That's why Earth. they're getting the dude to go to the mountain, so it blows up and covers the Earth and terraforms it for the precursors. Mm. I don't know why they need a new planet, but yeah. apparently they need okay. that's the thing. Is we we don't have motivation. Here. It's explained fully in the first one. Like, no. Why do they need the Earth? Because they used up all their resources on their planet. So go to a different Earth after the first one was. We're destroyed. closer. But we already defeated them. Why would they try again with uh, a giant fusion one this time, which is fucking cool or pretty cool? Yeah, and it was it was it was right cool. Like you got to see the big one that. The hybrid. The hybrid of like the multiple little ones that combined. See, what? I like that. I like that. Um, also, I mean, part of the issue with me is as well is that they have a hard turn in the audience focus here, where they are aiming it pretty hard at kids here. Now they are trying to get that Hunger Games audience yeah. since there's no Hunger Games. So the girl. I mean, John Boyega is cool. I like the girl as an actress, but the rest, the rest of the kids there. I can't remember a single one of them. I remember her and Victoria. I, and that's it. I remember the Russian girl because she that's, was also in. Uh, she had a personality. She was the only one that had a personality. The rest of the kids, they were like brain bland soup. She was in the Cloverfield movie in the space. Sure, movie. that's all I remember her by. But every other kid, no personality whatsoever. They barely have any lines. They are just kind of there, and yeah. I got giant robots fighting giant monsters. I'm satisfied. I, I, I know that's all you're looking for, but for me, I want more of this. And if you're going to do more of this, you have to give me more than what I could see within just the rubber suits. I genuinely can't remember any of the kids Yeah, you know, beyond the Russian girl. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the rest of them, it was, they oh, were just there. No, they had the uh, introductory happy Asian guy. Yes. Yeah, that was, I don't know. What do you remember was. what happened to him, though? Do you remember which kid was in which Jagger? Did... No, yeah. I don't, actually. Didn't matter. All None of them matter. Not a single one of their characters mattered. I Again, I like seeing cool robots, but the people, if you're going to do something with mechs, the people inside the robots have to matter. Because if I don't care if they die or not, I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> they're gone. Other Russian boy. I, was he Russian German? No. I don't know what he was. No. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That was, that's the only one I can remember. Yeah, they used I the troll video because it was it calmed him down. I love that part. I died. I, kind of, I like the other guys in introduction into that where he's playing the video and he's like, this is calming for me. The other guy's like, what about me? That's not calming for me. <laughs> Honestly, it felt like a real stale grab at a meme. And if one that's I real like... old. <laughs> I, I, I remember it all. It was, it cringed. I cringed. It felt like they were, because I mean, if you're going to reference like 2005 memes, <laughs> I... I give the credit using it for the space when they were like blasting off. Yes, that was a good thing. Using the actual like video in the scene, they yeah. Honestly, it felt like it felt like a shameless reference, and it was just so out of place for me that it's like, <laughs> oh man, it feels like you're trying to appeal to kids, but uh, fourteen year olds don't remember this. Do um. <laughs> Do all the Jaggers look different? Oh, yes. Like Gundam? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're all different. They all have their different powers and stuff like that. The red one's fast. <laughs> and it has the two short swords. <laughs> though, though Gypsy, uh, Gypsy Avenger. Avenger is getting jobbed the entire time. Like every uh, It sucks! It sucks! Why does it suck so bad if it's it, the main mech? It's the, yeah, it gets beat up so often. He stole somebody else's weapons to make it better. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> I just, I there was the one that was, there was a tri pilot one that was cool. It yeah, that big, was a super uh, fast one. Circle, no, that, no, the super, no. The, the one that was a big circle arm. Thing. Oh, that was the three one. Yeah, because she got to sit in like oh, the chest yeah, in the and, chest chest and shoot, and then yeah. yeah, she's the only person I remember. Another question. Yeah, it's Russian girl. Yeah, it's the Russian girl. <laughs> yeah. Does, is there one with leg guns for legs? No. no. But they do have kind of rockets everywhere. Yes. Yeah. They start throwing rockets on everything, which gets better. I hope there's a third one. Hide you blood rockets. I hope there's a third one, but they have to do better. It has to be more than just <laughs> robots versus aliens, or you will not get more in this franchise, and I don't know if it will. I don't think this did enough to get a third movie. I need 
I, I would really like the other robots. I know it's like real steel or whatever, but like Jaegers have some pretty cool concepts to them, and I would like to see large fights like between them. When Omega or Red or whatever his name was showed up, he, he decimated everybody. Yeah. That's an awesome mech. Bring things like that up. And I think that would have been cool is having some sort of civil war within the the aftermath of all this destruction because he's like, oh, yeah, everyone came together, rebuilt together. What? Or it's like, oh, well, no, resources are now scarce because we blew everything trying to defeat these monsters and everyone's scrambling to defend Question. themselves. During the movie, I understand. The, what happened to the robot that caught Scrapper? The giant Jaeger that was like a police bot that was they never shown again. They gave a throwaway line that all of the other mechs from all of the other areas got destroyed. Oh, really? Yeah, by the drones. Oh. And, and <laughs> so it really was just a really bad robot, I yeah. guess? It was like, like a drone? Like a, like a little... They're like Apple products. <laughs> they made drone mechs. <laughs> like they made drone tiger. mechs that were all powered secretly by Kaiju brains. And Apple. And Apple. <laughs> They're all pure white drones that look like they could, like... Like little drones. No, like giant no. Jaeger oh, drones. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, a drone just means that it's not piloted, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I guess just like, bang! She, she was just picturing, like, a bunch of Amazon, like, delivery bots. <laughs> yes! And that's why I thought it was so ridiculous. How were they all destroyed by such tiny little robots? On that note, guys, we're going to wrap up the show here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, if you want to continue the conversation, do so on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. Or follow us on our other social media on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, popping. We're posting episodes. Subscribe to us on iTunes. If you want to support the station, patreon.com slash C-I-L-U. Uh, no final song here. We're just going to roll right into the end credits. But, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. I'm Megan. I'm Alicia. And, I'm and, and we're, we're your Thunder We'll see you next week.